So let's take a look at some of these JavaScript array methods, starting off with for each. So the definition of for each from the Mozilla Developer Network is the for each method executes a provided function once for each array element. So looking at that definition, we already know that the goal of the for each method is to loop through the provided array and execute whatever we want for each element in that array. So let's go ahead and type up an example right here. So we're gonna create a, I don't know, a variable called array, and we're gonna give it in um, an array of like numbers. So let's do one, two, three, and four. Cool, so now that we got that, we're gonna go ahead and use the for each method on it. So array dot for each, and it takes, well, it takes two parameters, but the second one isn't, I don't wanna talk about the second one, so let's just talk about the first one, which is the callback function. So I'm just gonna do an arrow function because it looks nice, and um, inside this callback function, or inside this part right here for the uh, parameters, um, it takes a few parameters, but we're only going to need one in this case right now, which is the current value, and we're gonna name that num, um, for, for number, obviously. And and what we're gonna return is let's just go ahead and console let's just log each um, each number to the console so console dot log num so as you can see right here by the way um, I'm using quoka to um, actually like view any like um, view whatever you would normally see on a console um, in VS code it's just it's just nice to do it's nice for you guys to look at so uh, if you want to know what that is that's quoka but as you can see, um, one, two, three, four, all, all, um, every single elements in this array is being logged to the console um, through this right here. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and check out the parameters um, that are available for uh, the for each method. So we got the usage right here, basically what I just showed you. Um, let's go over down here to the parameters. So the for each method itself takes one parameter and then the callback function takes Three parameters. Um, I've already showed you. Th I've already showed you callback, which is uh, the function to execute on each element of the array. The second was the current value, which is also what we used. Uh, this num right here, which is the current value being processed in the array. And then there's two more. Uh, the first one is index, which is the index um, of the current value in the array. So if I go ahead and type uh, index, or uh, just I guess I. <laughs> And I go ahead and add a, actually, let me make it an array. So we can type down num and we're going to type down i. And as you can see right here, uh, as you can see right there, um, you see that's that first, you can see that for the first uh, elements, the index is zero. For the second one, the index is one. The third one, the index is two, and for the fourth one, the index is three. So there's that. And the last one is array, um, which is the array that for each was called on. So if I go ahead and add this right here, array, right, and I go ahead and uh, log array to the console, it's just going to log that, uh, <laughs> it's gonna log the array that we, uh, that we called on four times. Um, so they, so if you have ever need a use for um, the entire array, then you have that as an option. So um, these two, these two uh, parameters right here are optional. You don't have to add them, you don't have to use them, but uh, if you ever need it, it's there. Cool, so now uh, let's go a little deeper um, under the hood. Actually, I shouldn't show you this. <laughs> Actually, no, whatever. So under the hood. Uh, I want to show you what um, for loop actually does, and I'm actually never mind. I'm not even going to show you this. We're going to do this authentically. I don't know, but um, if we wanted to do this, I guess the vanilla JavaScript way. Uh, I don't know if it's like vanilla JavaScript. Maybe, okay, let's call it vanilla vanilla JavaScript because for each is already like part of JavaScript. So I'm going to show you the vanilla. I'm going to show you the pure way of doing it. So uh, let's go ahead and bring that back in. Uh, let's, no, let's delete this. What I'm gonna do here is um, 
So this for each uh, method right here, basically what it's using is a for loop. It's a basic for loop. So if I go ahead and um, create a for loop right here for let's, or I don't know, let's just do var i equals zero. Every time i is less than the length of array, uh, increase it by one. So, and then what we're gonna do here is console.log array. So, as you can see, this uh, this is basically what that for each method is doing. So if I go ahead and um, uncomment this and kind of make this look a little bit pretty, uh, look how much better this looks compared to this little for loop right here. Um, it's really nice to use array methods like for each over the traditional for loop is because it just, it looks a lot better. It's a lot, it's less code, which is prone to less errors and it's just cleaner overall. Um, you could use this. Um, it's, it's, it's completely fine to use either or, but um, it's fine to use either or, and you should know how to do both, know how to use both. Um, learn learn for loops to know the um, to uh, to know uh, to know the core of how this works or, or how how loops work and then once you're once you understand the for loops get into the array methods and use that um, for most situations um, the few situations where you would want to use the for loop over a for each is if you need to cut the um, if you need to cut the um, the loop short. So if you ever need to like, you know, use the break, use break right here, um, then you would have to use a traditional for loop because uh, for each doesn't allow you to do that. If you're, uh, if you're ever in a case where you need to loop through the entire array, which is most of the time, that's when you can use for each, that's when you can use map, uh, so on and so forth. But if you ever need to like, or if you ever need or want to, you know, break, uh, you, if you want to stop the um, stop the whole loop short, then you're going to have to use a for loop. And maybe there are other methods to doing that, but um, as, I, as I know currently, or as I know right now, this is, this is the main way to do it. So there's that. So now I want to give you a practical example of a situation where you would uh, want to use map. I mean, not map. Um, a situation where you'd want to use for each. And let's say that, um, and I'd say one case, one one good case is uh, whenever you need to call a function on each element of an array. So let's give an example right here. Let's create like a a function called. Uh, I don't know, log number. And we're going to uh, make that a function that that logs the uh, the parameter or uh, that logs whatever to the console. So like so. And then we map through array. Oh, not map. We use for each. And uh, why does it do this to me? There we go. So, so here we go. So what's going on here is um, I have. So what's going? So so let's recap what's going on here. Up here we have a variable that has. Uh, <clears throat> So up here we have a variable that has an array of numbers, and right over here we have a, a function that uh, that takes any number as a parameter, or yeah, any number as a parameter, and uh, logs that to the console. Right now down here we are looping through that array up here, and for each array we're going to log that number to the console. So we're basically um, running that log number function for each element in the array and logging each um, each element to the console. So I hope this video is helpful to you in understanding how array for each works. And I have more, I'll have more videos on array methods over here as they come out. And 
yeah, if you like this video, give me a like, give me a sub. I'll have more stuff coming out. Peace.